Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Palindrome Spine Care for Life. I'm Dr. Dan Lieberman, and today I'm going to talk to you about a, a very important topic, and that is how do I get going doing some exercises that aren't going to hurt my back or neck, but allow me to really take some time to get back in the game. This is the exercise is the most important thing you can do to help yourself and help me get you better, get you back in the game. And the important part is that we start in a way that is comfortable and yet strenuous enough to really be of benefit. There's two parts to everyday exercise. The first part is aerobic conditioning, that's your wind, and the second part is strength training. And we're going to talk about both of those parts today. In order to make a difference, you need to exercise six days a week. For most of my patients, I tell them, well, why don't you take Sunday off and give me Monday through Saturday as your six days. People who exercise successfully over time almost always do it when they first wake up in the morning. When you first wake up, lace up some tennis shoes and depending on the day, you'll have a home exercise regimen that you can do. Strength building exercises involve a period of healing afterwards where the strength really happens. So you don't actually make yourself stronger while you're doing the exercise. You make yourself stronger as you recover from the exercise. In order for that to work properly, after doing strength exercises, you need to give yourself a day off. So the way I want you to set up your exercise regimen is we're going to do strength exercises on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That gives us Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday to do the aerobic exercises, the exercises that work on your wind. So let's talk first about aerobic exercises. This is our Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday regimen. When you're up to full speed, I want you to be at 80% of your maximal heart rate for 45 minutes. The easiest way to get there is to start out with just plain old-fashioned walking. Well, what if I can't walk for a full 45 minutes? No problem. Walk whatever amount of time that you can do comfortably right now and then increase it by a comfortable amount at one to two week intervals. You've got the rest of your life to get up to 45 minutes. It doesn't have to happen today or tomorrow. So if you could do 20 minutes today comfortably, then next week try 25. You probably won't even notice the difference. A week or two later, try 30. And before you know it, you're gonna be up to 45 minutes. Once you get to the 45 minutes of walking and you feel pretty good there, you're going to be ready to try something a little bit on the next level. And the next level after walking is walking on an elliptical bike. You know elliptical bikes. You see them in the gym. You hold on to the handles and you go back and forth with your arms while you go up and down with your legs. Those are great because there's absolutely no impact on the ground. Another not quite as good but still really good uh, uh, machine would be the treadmill. I really like treadmills because if you can increase the inclination or angle, you get a really strong uh, workout for your wind with very minimal impact. So treadmill is definitely another option. And then there's every kind of manner of other types of machines. The only one I would really stay away from is the rowing machine because I don't want you to torque under pressure right now. The backward part of the row is, is really a little bit too much. And uh, any kind of skiing machine where you're pushing your legs out way far in the back, that can cause early uh, problems that might make it, might derail you and make it hard for you to get going. All right, so we've talked about your wind. We're gonna get to 45 minutes, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So now let's talk about the strength training. Strength training exercises need to be done in a way that builds up your posture. Now, all the stuff they told us in high school turns out to be wrong. When you are um, exercising, when I was in high school, they taught me, okay, you're going to have really big biceps, so what you need to do is break that muscle down, and as that muscle breaks down, it's going to heal back. So in order to break it down the most, we're going to isolate it. We're going to do nothing but just this one muscle. No. For your purposes, for spinal purposes, the muscles we need to work on are the postural muscles that go from here to here. Those muscles are very small. There's hundreds of them. They're very strong when they work together, but individually they're very small, and it's easy to kind of turn them off and let them not do the work in favor of the big muscles. The exercise regimen I'm about to show you was designed by me and the other doctors here at Palindrome Spine Care for Life, and its purpose is to get the most out of those little muscles. The first thing you're going to notice is 
we're going to do a lot of repetition. So instead of doing three or four with maximal weight, we're going to do 20 of each exercise and we're going to string the exercises together, but one set is going to include 20 repetitions of each exercise. The second thing you're going to notice is I'm off, I'm off state, I'm unstable, I'm off balance. The exercise you're going to see is not me lifting the weight here. The exercise is me holding my body on the ball while the weight is moving forward and backward from my body. That is called postural instability, or um, some people call it muscle confusion, and that's the best way to engage and build up these postural exercise, these postural muscles. All right, let's start out with a couple of warm-up exercises. The first warm-up exercise is a squat. And if there's one exercise I could have you do every day, or, or I'm sorry, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it would be this exercise. The reason is it's extremely effective at building motor control, at restoring neuromuscular motor control throughout your body. So let's start out with a squat. I'm going to squat a, a kettlebell just to show you um, what, what it looks like to do it with weight. You're going to do your squats without the kettlebell. When you do them for your exercise, you're just going to do them in your room. So a squat is, it, the, best, the best way to squat properly is start out by checking your feet. You want your feet to be a little more than shoulder width apart and you want them to be pointing out to the side a little bit. Put your hands on your knees and stick your bum out. This position is what the quarterback's in before he takes a snap. So you've seen this throughout your life, but you want to get your bum out. The important part is your butt has to be behind your knees. You're then going to go down with your knees to the ground and then lift up with your legs. Watch my back when I do this. I can reach the ground and my back never goes beyond a 45 degree angle. Couple more things about the squat. Squatting is actually sitting and standing. When you sit, you should be doing a squat. And when you stand, you're coming out of the squat. When you come out of a squat, you need to do it with your glutes. This is counterintuitive at first, so I want to emphasize it. As you come up, whoop, the thing that pulls your pelvis into position is actually your gluteal muscles. So it's very important that you uh, sort of over tighten them as you stand up. As your glutes tighten, what ends the stand is your abs. So you want to have your glutes tighten and then your abdominal muscles take over. I can barely talk while I'm doing this. <laughs> it's, it involves a lot of muscles. It, it's a muscle, it's a muscle uh, coordination issue. In order for you to be able to sit and stand properly throughout the day, we're going to train that back into you through your squat. Remember, spinal disorders are messing with your neuromuscular control. Part of the way they take you out of the game is by changing the way you control and use your body. Now that things are going to go better, that you're going to recover, we need to get you back into a more normal physiology and this is the way to do it. So let's start out with 10 squats. And the fastest and easiest way to do them is just to have the ball behind you. By the way, my ball today is, um, is on a base. This base is very handy for preventing the ball from rolling away while you're using it. It's not mandatory, but I think it's, it's helpful. So the squats we're going to do, we're just going to go down, get in position, stick your bum out, go down and up. And on that up, I'm tightening my glutes as hard as I can and resisting with my abs. We're going to do 20 of those. One, two, three, through 20. The second exercise that's important to um, get us going and sort of loosen us up for the weights is a lunge. Not everyone can do a lunge. So if this looks like it's a little more than you're ready for, hold off. But the basics of a lunge are the, one, the foreleg is going to go out in front of us. We're going to put our weight on the front foot and then using your gluteal muscles, go down to the ground and back up. And then there's a lot of variations. Probably the easiest way to lunge is just to alternate legs down, forward, 
down. Or if you want to, it's more fun if you want to uh, make, gain a little ground, you can just keep going and go, uh, go forward, lunge forward with each step. Doesn't really matter, but I want you to do 20 lunges, um, 10 with each leg. All right, now let's get some weights and start doing the strengthening part of these exercises. Now, remember I talked about we're not trying to break down the muscles, we're trying to incorporate postural muscles. So you want to you want to use um, very light weights. In fact, these are five pound weights. Most people I encourage them, don't start with anything more than five pounds. Five pounds is plenty. So the first exercise we're going to do is a curl. I'll have you sit on the ball, put your arms straight in front of you, and curl forward. Look at my elbows. They're pointing out forward. If you're doing this and you're saying, wow, I can knock out 20 of these without any difficulty, good. <laughs> That's great. Now try it like this. Go um, put your arms forward, lift one leg off the ground, and try it that way. As you get more and more unstable, you're doing more and more exercise. And if you're really doing well with that, the next step is to try to get both legs off the ground. <laughs> I don't think I can do it on this ball, but it's like this. It's hard, but it's, um, you really feel your whole core waking up. So your first exercise is your curl. Your second exercise is a press. Put your arms to your side, your elbows pointed out, and go straight up. 20 of these, two, three, that's good. This is a very, um, very little movement in this exercise. It's misleading. You think, oh, did I really do it? It's a very important one, though, because it opens up your shoulders. And then the third exercise is a fly. You start out with the weights to your side, and it's like you're hugging a tree. Oh, I love your tree. It's right in the middle. So you're pulling out like this. When you come back, you want to squeeze. Now women, a lot of women have um, insufficient shoulder strength to hold up their chest. This is a great exercise for you. Lift your chest up, exaggerate it, really, really lift, 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 and when you come back, hold there for a second, squeeze back. That's building those muscles that hold your chest up and will correct your posture. Well, we're almost there. Two more exercises, and for these I'm going to kick out my base. The first exercise, is, the first of the last two is a crunch. And the crunch exercise is to work on our abdominals. Most of my patients, this is the exercise they're the most worried about. <laughs> so let's take a second to show how you get into this. Um, you start out by sitting on the ball, and you very slowly roll yourself forward by taking little steps. Now the ball should be directly under your back. If you're feeling iffy about the crunch, come down so you're on a little bit of an angle and you're very close to the ground. As you get more and more confident, you can get back farther. Put your hands behind your head and crunch forward by pulling your elbows toward your knees. And you want to do 20 of those. Crunch is a fantastic uh, exercise for your abdominal muscles. Remember, your abdominal muscles are actually the flexor muscles of your back. So strengthening them is absolutely crucial to having a normal back. In fact, if you looked at most people with back problems and defined risk factors for those problems, the leading risk factor in most studies is weak abdominal muscles. The next exercise we're going to do is the Superman. This is the funnest exercise, but it's also kind of the weirdest to get into. The easiest way is to get down on your knees, put the ball on your stomach, and then lean on the ball. See how you're flying like Superman? You're going to go down and up. And as you progress, you can get to the point where you can lift a leg. and move that way. Again, you're totally off balance, but that's, that's the exercise. It's being off balance. Just a couple more comments about balance. If you're an older um, person with back problems, so, so I'm talking 80 or above, what um, falling is probably your number one risk factor for death. 
at, above 80, m half of the people we lose in this country, we lose to ramifications of a fall, whether it's a broken hip or something of that type. When we were little kids, we did a lot to improve our balance. We were riding bikes, walking on fences. We're not doing that anymore. So sitting on a ball is one of the best things you can do to help you uh, make sure you don't fall. Well, that concludes these first five exercises. I want you to go to our Facebook, uh, Palindrome Spine Care for Life Facebook, and take a look at them in written form if you need additional input. You can also email us or contact us if you're having trouble getting started. If you're not a patient of mine and you don't know if you should be doing exercises, period, you need to check in with your doctor. Um, doctors can't tell you whether it's safe to exercise, but they can tell you what the risk of exercise is. I'll tell you the benefits of exercise outweigh the risk in nearly every case, but it's important to establish that risk up front. So if you don't know your health uh, before going in, make sure you see your doctor before starting this or any other exercise program. Thanks and have a great day.